And we saw a fantastic uh, show yesterday at the Upper House as a part of the Confluence, the Festival of India in Australia. And one of the highlights actually was the performance by Raghu Dikshit. And Raghu has kindly agreed to talk to us. Raghu, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was an amazing show, as I said. And uh, before we go into the show, maybe our viewers can, if they can understand your background. Yeah. Uh, where do you come from and uh, how it all started for you? I grew up in a small town uh, in south of India in a state called Karnataka. Uh, it's called Mysore. Yes. It's a, it's a very <laughs> a, a historical city. Yes. Uh, and then I, of course, uh, moved to Bangalore, which is uh, the IT capital of India. And I've been there for the last uh, 18 years. Uh, I studied to be a microbiologist and then went on to become uh, a musician full time. So, and before that I was trained in classical oh. dance form called Bharatnatyam. So, oh, which I, really yeah, I did my Vidwat, which is the profession C grade exams and I almost took that as my profession. Yes. But then things changed at home, so I became, uh, what do you say, the man of the family early after my father passed away. So, I had to study well and get a job, so I got into microbiology, which I studied with a lot of passion. I stood, my, I stood first in my university, got a gold medal for that. Yes. And, and worked as a scientist for about a year and then I could not ignore this calling for music so I quit that and came back to India from Belgium and, and uh, yeah then the, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Well uh, the thing is that uh, you were, uh, uh, is, is that running in the family? Anyone has got any passion for music you think? Uh, see, I mean, nobody really pursued it as a profession, but everyone was almost always inclined to music. So there was always Carnatic classical music being played in uh, at my house. I grew up in a very uh, conservative uh, Tambram family, yes. so Carnatic uh, music or any other classical art form is, is something that we are, we are almost always constantly getting exposed to. Uh, like parents used to attend uh, every possible concert in and around uh, our house. Uh, there was something called as Nada Brahma Sangeeta Sabha, yeah, right. where uh, you would go and listen to Carnatic class. All the greats of uh, South Indian and North Indian classical musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, very close. Lived very close to Geeta Road, where Na Ram Navami concerts yeah, used to happen. Yeah, yeah. So right from childhood, uh, I was always exposed to the classical art forms. But it was much later that I discovered I have a voice and, and I could play the. I, mean, I started learning the, to play the guitar on my own. And once I discovered that freedom of letting my voice out and singing whatever I want, yes, yes. <laughs> that's when I got hooked to it. And after that, yeah, I continued doing that. Yeah, fantastic voice. And uh, uh, obviously, this kind of music is very new to, especially for people from the South. Mm. They haven't heard this kind of music, the fusion music. How, how did you. Uh, think of gelling the, for example, the classical music, which background you have, plus the contemporary music and make it into a completely different form of music. Uh, there was no really a thought process. It is something, I think, uh, uh, a representation of uh, my upbringing itself. Yes. While I grew up with classical music and folk music around me all the time, uh, though I'd never learned both of the art, uh, art forms. And then when I went to college, I started borrowing tapes from friends who used to play, uh, play listen to a lot of Western music. When I was growing up, uh, bands like uh, Wham, Phil Collins, uh, Iron Maiden, uh, uh, Slayer, uh, <laughs> and, and Metallica were, were the big bands. And, 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 and so I grew up listening to both sides. Yes. And it was only a natural instinct for me to uh, bring them together. I couldn't sing English the way English is supposed to be sung simply because I was such a such a tambram to, <laughs> to start with yeah. and at the same time I couldn't sing classical in its purest form because I never learned classical music. Yeah. So I'm a half cook in both <laughs> both areas so, so it, it made only sense to complete it by mixing the two uh, areas of music that I knew and it became a natural instinct to do that actually. Yeah. It was never really a forced thing. Oh. Yeah. How did you get all your friends together? They also seem to share your passion. Yeah, we became friends after we met, actually. It, uh, uh, music brought us together. Most of them, uh, my band is not really a you know, fixed band as such. My lineup keeps changing and, yeah. and these are all musicians whom I would have probably seen somewhere or uh, they would have sent their demos to me and, and if I, I just collaborate with musicians whom I find interesting and, and uh, they, if they want to collaborate with me and then we find a common ground to meet and, and, and uh, get together. Yeah. So this lineup has been together for almost a year and, and you could see that the camaraderie is very strong on stage. Yeah, right. I, I believe that you should make music with friends rather than uh, great musicians. <laughs> yeah, so when, when uh, people of like uh, 
mindedness come together, I think the, the the force just becomes that much more strong on stage. And, and yesterday you could see there were so many laughter, fire, jokes, smiles and joy and laugh. You know, there was, there was so much happiness around and it's infectious. Once the band is happy, I think the rest of the crowd can yeah, feel it and get infected right. with it. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's the thing that I observed, the difference between various concerts that I, of the Indian artists who came to perform at the Upper House and your concert were totally different. You know, you involved the audience so much and uh, uh, they said that the uh, whole atmosphere was very unique. Oh, well, that is something uh, we have constantly uh, uh, you know, attempted and worked towards of, of getting the crowd involved. Uh, again, that is something I learned from dance. Uh, it's called Rasotpati, which means uh, making the people feel the emotion that is already there inside them. We just need a trigger. So the band becomes just a mirror or a trigger to invoke that joy or happiness they already have in their hearts. They just don't know how to dig into it. <laughs> so once you dig into it and, and make them, you know, uh, kind of forget and then shed all their shyness and, and, and whatever they come with, you know, an idea. Once they let their hearts out, I think it's just pure joy. And yeah. It's amazing how everyone gets yeah. involved and it's, just, it's infectious. If the, if the guy next, next to you is singing along, then you feel like singing along and then it's a chain reaction and you could see within a song when early few people started initially and then, then the whole house erupted and, and by the end of the show it was, it was quite a madhouse. <laughs> it was, it was. Actually, uh, we saw, for example, some of the top singers who came from India, Shreya Goshal was there, Sonu Nigam was there and Bombay Jayashree performed at the same place. We didn't see the crowd getting worked up so much. How, is it something consciously have developed, working with the crowd? No, I mean, uh, I wouldn't want to comment on others, like when, when Bombay Jayashree is singing on, on stage in, a, in Sydney Opera House, I would probably close my eyes and listen and probably tears will come rolling down. Uh, and, and if Sonu Nigam is singing or Shreya Goshal is singing, you can only remember all the, uh, you know, all, all the amazing heartbreaks you've gone through. <laughs> so, whereas our mission on stage is, is actually to spread happiness. We don't sing sad songs at all. We don't sing songs which will remind people of their you know negative negativity or you know the idea is to sing happy songs uh, songs with positive messages and, and the music itself is very vibrant upbeat and and, and uh, very uh, what do you say foot stomping the idea is to get them involved yeah, yeah. and and, and for make them forget at least for that one and a half hours all their worries and sorrows and and uh, probably they'll all get back to their worries after the show <laughs> but They'll probably face the same worries with a positive frame of mind and probably realize, oh, sh my worry is not that big at all after all. <laughs> so, the, so the idea is really to make people happy. And, and I think that is the reason why probably we kind of insist and sometimes even bully the audience into, you know, to participate. <laughs> uh, how many years back you did your first stage performance? Oh. <laughs> That's a strange question. First stage performance was like probably at, at my house uh, when I invited a few friends. Uh, like a proper band performance happened I think on the, it's a strange day. My, my, my dad passed away in the morning and evening I had a concert and my mother said, once you finish the funeral, what, what is there to, for you to you know, cry about? You have to go and perform. So that was my first show and that was in uh, 1993. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 1994, actually, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, come a long way. And, of course, the foray into Bollywood. Uh, when, when did that happen? Bollywood uh, came... Oh, first of all, I think the uh, uh, Kannada films. When yeah. did that happen? Kannada films is the one which I oh, you know, debuted uh, as, as a music composer for films. Uh, I did a movie called Psycho and then there was a movie called Just Mat Matali, which were uh, massive, massive cult hits, especially uh, in Karnataka and, and uh, elsewhere. All the Kannada guys in the rest of the world got hooked to it. It's strange, however, though, that it took quite many years for this music to be discovered. It's not only now that I see that everybody knows these songs by heart and, and, and yeah, everybody nice. sings along when I, when nice I song nudge song. them. <laughs> yeah, yesterday they were bullying me to sing those songs, but <laughs> so considering uh, the you know, sanctity of Opera House, we didn't want to play any film not songs yesterday. Frame yeah, time frame. And, and uh, it was not just the right kind of uh, environment to play the film songs. Yeah. Maybe uh, next time I come back and do an exclusive concert for all the Kannadigas here, maybe I'll end up playing all the yeah, film yeah, songs. <laughs> but yeah, film music, and, and then I shied away from film music for a very long time, six years. I focused more on my performance thing, and then this year, of course, but I got back to film music. I'm doing a couple of Bollywood films, yeah. one Tamil film, 
and four Kannada films. Okay. So that's a lot of work on my plate right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully by the year end, you'll get to hear most of the soundtracks. Yeah. Okay. Is it uh, something that you want to stray away from uh, filmy music and concentrate on uh, the fusion music that you are traveling around and doing? Not really. I've been, I've, I've always uh, been a, a man without a plan. <laughs> I've, I've, I, yeah, I've taken life exactly one day at a time and without any you know futuristic ideas. You know. So, but right now uh, the focus is that like when I started, a stu I built a new studio for myself to make music. So, and then when people started hearing that, they thought, okay, so Raghu is actually based in Bangalore, and then started knocking on my door and saying, would you want to make music for this film? And when I announced one film, then then another filmmaker walked in and. It it just became a chain reaction and I took it up and, and some of them are incredible filmmakers uh, some of them I have started uh, you know for the it's their debut film but the script is so brilliant that I couldn't help but get involved in it yeah. so things like that so it's, it's mainly uh, the kind of work I got kind of uh, got me back into films yeah. this year and we heard yesterday that uh, you came here to Sydney a couple of years back and you were uh, standing in front of the Opera House saying that I want to perform here. Yeah. And after you performed yesterday, what was the feeling? <laughs> it is. I, mean, I completely believe in that adage power of dreams. You know, once you dream and then you keep yeah. dreaming about it every day and then paint it every day the way you want it to happen. In, but um, and, and most of my dreams have come true because I completely believe in them sometimes, you know. And this was one of them. So two years back when we came to perform at the Paramasala Music Festival yeah, at the Paramata, uh, um, one of my friends took me to, uh, you know, do a like, sightseeing tour to the Opera House because I so badly wanted to see it. So we went through the entire tour of the place and we sat in the auditorium listening to that absolute pin drop silence and how even a whisper can be heard if you're on stage. That was a mind-numbing experience and I said, wow, what a haul. Mm, yeah. And then I just sat there for two minutes with closed eyes and said one day I want to come and perform maybe in two years within two years I want to come and perform here and that dream came true yesterday so it was very surreal for me yes. yeah. you have traveled obviously all over the world Russia Hong Kong UK of course you yeah. go very often yeah. as compared to those places how do you find Australian audi Australia and the Australian audience I realized not just in Australia but around the world people are now opening up to you know uh, other cultures and if, of course uh, thanks to the internet uh, you know, coming into our lives everything is available at the uh, touch of our fingertips and, and, and that has exposed everybody to every kind of culture and people who are open to accepting and, and understanding other cultures are the ones whom we find very interesting and, and, and the tribe is only growing. So yesterday you could see there were Australians, there were uh, right. uh, people from hometown, there were North Indians <laughs> and everybody had an equally good time. Yeah, so, so it, but of course, it, it became all the more special yesterday simply because of the venue that it is. Yes. It is an iconic li landmark and, and uh, every artist dreams of coming and performing and, and we got it pretty easy actually <laughs> and I would love to I mean and I have to mention that uh, the Ministry of Culture India uh, the Indian High Commission in Australia uh, ICCR who sponsored our uh, travel here and and of course teamwork arts who put up the whole uh, festival together all of them uh, are responsible for making my dream come true so mm -hmm. I, I wholeheartedly thank all of the all the people behind it uh, yes. to make this such a fantastic fantastic festival yes. Uh, finally, uh, Raghu, what kind of a, a future have you mapped out for Raghu Dikshit and the team? I think I already answered your question. I, I'm a man without a plan. But this year, we, like I said, like a lot of soundtracks are coming out. And uh, we're also tied up with Savan, the music listening uh, app. So they have now come forward and funded our next set of eight songs. So we're going to compose one song every month starting from October or November and release it as a single on uh, Savan and also music videos. So that's the next uh, plan to release our independent music through Savan. Oh, okay. mm. Raghu, thanks very much for talking to us, Indian. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. All your hands up. what this guy is doing on stage with the phone. It's live on Facebook, baby. Let's <laughs> Some lights on the audience.
Mandali, 